All right, so we're going to get right into this hot topic. Texas, Georgia, last night, Saturday night, third quarter. Um, I was at the game. Um, third quarter, we get an issue with an um, interception that's taken back by um, JB, Jade Barron. Ends up, it's like a 50-yard, 40-yard um, pick, right? He brings it down to like the 10-yard line. Um, and then there's a flag thrown for pass interference, defensive pass interference on JB. And it's a wild situation. The atmosphere, first of all, the atmosphere was insane that, that last night. It was, it, was, it was incredible. But the atmosphere during that moment was ridiculous. Texas had just scored a touchdown, um, made it a one-score game. Is I think it was eight points they were down. And then, um, no, actually, my bad. They were down two scores. This would have made it a one-score game because, obviously, they scored a touchdown. But um, this was a big moment in the game. And they threw a threw – a, they the rest threw a pass interference call, and it was insane. The crowd, the atmosphere started going crazy, guys. I cannot – it's hard to explain the emotions that went through that play because – First off, that play happened right in front of me. It was like at the 40-yard line on the closest side. Like literally, guys, right in front of me, the play happens. And um, the mix of emotions that happened from him picking it off, returning it basically for a touchdown, and then having the call reversed, um, to then having the call basically taken away, the emotions were ridiculous. Um, so to just go through that play... What happened, I think the wide receiver, his name is Smith, but Smith and JB, right, they were on a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and it was like a 10-yard out. So Smith, Georgia um, wide receiver, is running a 10-yard, and as he's about to do like a curl, he there's contact made at that 10-yard mark where they're both pushing each other, but just basically like hands out, just physical. But you got to remember, the, the wide receiver is trying to run through the CB, which the CB has... He has the right to earn his place. The wide receiver just can't run through him. So he gets contact with the CB, with JB, and then turns around. And then that's when the ball actually gets thrown too far to the right towards the out-of-bounds. And JB's right there for the interception. Um, and so the ref, the ref was standing right there. He saw the entire play. He was probably five yards from the wide receiver. Um, and for him to throw a flag and then call the pass interference, and then basically, gosh, it was probably 10 minutes to then pick up the flag and say there's no there's no call, there's no PI. I have never seen that before in my entire life of watching college football. And I think the big factor that changed the calling, that basically took the calling away, was the fact that the student section on the far side started throwing water bottles, probably like 50 to 60 water bottles onto the field um, all at once, which created, because you got to remember, Georgia was about to snap the ball. On the, we're already on to the next play. We're about to snap the ball. Georgia is, right? And then the water bottles start coming onto the field, and that causes a stoppage in the game, which then gives the, gives the refs time to huddle up and to re-talk about the call from the past play and that's eventually made that there was no PI. So I think what happened, because obviously when the ref said there was no PI, I thought, and I think everyone else was thinking that they were going to call some kind of 15-yard penalty on Texas because the fans were throwing um, you know, uh, water balls onto the field. But no, they were, literally took the call away. So I think what, what happened is, because you can't review PI. So I think what happened is they were able to huddle up and the guy, the ref who threw the flag was like, look, I messed up. We literally saw the instant replay on the big screen. I messed up. That was not the right call. And they got it fixed. They did the right decision and got it fixed. Now, that's going to cause a lot of, I don't, I don't know what to call it. Basically, it's going to cause a lot of issues within the in the whole college football world in terms of that makes it okay for fans to throw stuff on the field to get a call change. We do not want that, but that kind of directed last night. So there's going to be have to, some kind of ruling or something's going to have to be addressed in terms of that. Um, 
It's the following day, and uh, the SEC, first of all, Texas um, came out and said, this is not what our fans do. We apologize, da 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 right? And then the SEC came out um, and said that we, we noticed that there was water bottles thrown. We noticed that there was a calling that was very unusual. We're going to do some investigation. We'll be back. We'll get back with y'all. Well, they just got back with the ruling about like an hour ago, and um, Texas is fined two hundred fifty thousand dollars for throwing for fans throwing water bottles onto the field, um, which is chump change. It's nothing for Texas, but um, they still got penalized, which obviously they should have to an extent because. If that never happened, the call would have never been correctly, and it would have been a big thing as well. So the biggest thing out of all of it is they got the call right. That's all I care about. They got the call right. Um, so the, the, they got the call right in terms of changing the call. Because if they would have kept with that initial call, the pass interference, this whole next week would have been outrageous in terms of that wasn't pass interference. Kind of like the Saints in uh, the Super Bowl a couple years back. Um, there was no review then. Now there's a review. So maybe, hey, they should bring review in college football. I think they should bring, I don't care if it slows it down. Get the call right. Just get the call right. I don't care if it slows the game down. Um, but shout out to the, shout out to the refs for re-talking about it and getting the call right. All right, moving on. Wow. Okay. Moving on. Um, so I just want to go over real fast the top 10. Um, I'll throw it up here real fast for y'all to see. And I just want to talk about, I'm doing this off of memory, but Oregon, they're one. They deserve to be one. They haven't lost a game. I know they haven't, I mean, they haven't really played anyone. They did beat Ohio State, which you got to give them credits to. They also did beat Boise. So, and Oregon kind of struggled in a couple, like, nobody games against, like, Idaho and stuff. But they are number one. They deserve the number one spot. Georgia's number two. I do think they are deserving of number two. They just beat the number one team in the nation out of Texas. They do deserve the number two spot. You could have some argument of Georgia being number one, um, but they have lost. They did lose to Alabama, who's now ranked 15. So there's that. Penn State at three, they're undefeated. They're, they deserve to be there. Ohio State at four, they deserve to be there. Texas at five. Um, I like where we're at, right? I, I think five is a good, a good spot because when you get down to six, there was Miami, who is undefeated. Miami hasn't played anyone. Miami has played a bunch of trash teams and almost lost like three teams, right? Louisville, Virginia Tech, and California. They should have lost all three of those games. And so they're sitting at six. I'm, I would have, Tennessee's at seven. I would have Tennessee at six, right? And I'd move Miami to seven. Tennessee, they beat Bama. They just beat Bama. Bama's Bama. They still beat Bama. Um, they had another game. Didn't they have another big game? I think they won as well. Uh, I know they do, they do have one loss, but they're a good team. Um, and then 8, 9, 10. Phew, LSU is at 8. 9 is Clemson. And 10 is Iowa State. Iowa State lost. I mean, Iowa State won, barely. They are undefeated, so they're at 10. But they haven't played anyone yet. So we still got a lot of football left um, for everything to settle out. Um, I think one big shocker is... A and M. I think A and M's in first place in the SEC. They're ranked 14th, right? One ahead of one ahead of Bama, but they are undefeated in the SEC. Um, so they're going to be a little sleeper. I also think another sleeper is um, well. First off, shout out Army and Navy. They're both ranked. They're both undefeated. Another sleeper is BYU. They can run the table and be a top four seed just just from winning the conference. So BYU is a sleeper. Um, Gosh, they, they almost lost. Yeah, they almost lost last week too. So we'll see what happens. It's still very early. We're just past the mid-mark of the college football season. Um, and so a lot of football to be played. I do want to talk about as well the um, Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning situation. That can be a whole hour-long video. But I just want... So everyone, obviously everyone loves the Manning train, right? Especially if you're a Texas fan. But the purpose to pull Art, to pull um, Quinn out of the game had nothing to do with, you know, he's been benched, he's, he's not the starter anymore. He needed to reset, right? Recalibrate and basically 
take a step back, let Arch come in for a drive or two, and then come back in the third quarter, which he did, and ball out, which he did. He had two touchdowns. He had a QBR rating. Dude, his QBR rating was, was very good um, in the third quarter. Um, so the reset, I think, definitely helped. Now, moving forward, we got Vandy next week. We're going to see what happens. I mean, Vandy's got a good team. they got a good offense. Texas, I mean, there's no reason Texas shouldn't win this game, but they got to figure out what they're doing in the quarterback situation. They're having a little trouble on the offensive line. you got to also remember, Georgia, they got a lockdown defense. I was watching the, the DBs, cornerbacks, safeties all night, locked up. They locked up everyone, and everyone's trying to blame Arch Manning. Everyone's trying to blame Quinn Ewers for – not throwing the ball down the field for getting sacked, for throwing interceptions, for fumbling the ball. They both fumbled the ball. Guys, I was looking down the field, 20, 30 yards down the field. There's no one open. There is no one open. And I'm not saying the team's bad. I'm not saying any of that. I'm not saying the wide receivers are bad or anything. All I'm saying is Georgia had an insane defense, and you just got to respect that, right? So moving forward, Texas got some issues a little bit, but they got a, they got a week to prepare, right? They got a re- week to go through the – um, um, you know, go through the, the film and figure stuff out. Same with Alabama. Milrow, that's a whole other story with Alabama and Milrow and why aren't they connecting? Why are they having trouble winning games? It's three three games in a row. They lost to, uh, who they lose to? They, first of all, they beat Georgia. They dominated Georgia. Then they lose to Vandy. They should have lost to South Carolina. And then they lose to, uh, who they just played? They lost to Tennessee. So, Alabama's got a whole lot of trouble. There's a lot of, a lot of issues with a bunch of teams still trying to figure out their system. And the good thing is we have a 12-team playoff. You can lose two games and still make the playoffs. Texas just used their mulligan. They, they're done using their mulligan. They got one more game to lose. Um, the thing with Alabama is they've already used both of their mulligans, right? They're a two-loss team. They cannot lose again, just like Ole Miss. Ole Miss has to go... To Baton Rouge, LSU, Death Valley, this coming weekend. Nope, not this coming weekend. Two or three weekends down the line. It's in November. And they can't lose. They've already, they've already used both of their mulligans. So they're a team that, you know, they got to win out. D- Dart said it in the press conference. We got to win out. So um, that's what I love about the 12-team playoffs. It's not a one and done. One thing I have noticed is... First of all, I think Oregon will eventually lose. They could lose this week to Illinois, but this is like the first time there's going to be no undefeated teams, yet we have the 12-team playoffs. So it's going to be very – it's very interesting how more everyone's like lost the game or two where in the years past, past 10 years, like there would be like four teams that wouldn't lose. So it's very interesting. Very interesting. Are they like kind of, oh, we had a mulligan. We'll kind of – it's all right if we lose a game. I would say, though, that the past three to four weeks has been the best college football ever. Uh, the 12-team playoffs basically keep so many teams alive. If there was no 12-team playoffs right now, like, honestly, God, there would be eight to ten teams left that can make the playoffs. Everyone else, your season's over. With the 12-team playoffs, we now have, gosh, guys, there's still, like, 30 teams that can make the playoffs, right? That's what I love about it. That's all about college football. You're still in it even if you lose. That's all I got. RDS EP16. Appreciate y'all watching the video. We got college football again this coming week. Who do we got? Game day is uh, in Indiana. I believe Indiana versus... Who's Indiana playing? Oh, I don't know who they're playing. They got Nebraska? It might be Nebraska. But um, we got we got Indiana playing. We got... Uh, um, LSU at Texas A&M, obviously Texas at Vandy. We got uh, Missouri's going into Alabama. That's going to be a good game. Ooh, we got Illinois who just had an insane game. Um, they blew out a team. I forgot who they blew out, but they're going to at Eugene, Oregon. I could see an upset there. And then we got a couple late games as well. Um, also, shout out Colorado. Y'all played lights out in Arizona. Um, I did not think y'all would blow them out. So shout out to Colorado. I know they lost Travis Hunter. I don't know how long he's out for, but um, I, I saw Colorado win that. So credits to them. But uh, I could talk about college football a lot more than this. I try to keep these podcasts for around 10 to 15 minutes. We're at that 16-minute mark. If you like these, drop drop some comments down below. 
What do you want to see? Who's your favorite team? And uh, I'll see you on the next podcast. Peace.